Hi, this is Matt McIntosh and in this video what we're going to look at doing is creating a cat rig from scratch. So to start off with I'm going to the command uh, panel under the create tab. Then I'm going to the helper section and choosing cat objects from the drop down list. And then what I want to do is where it says none, um, draw out a triangle in the middle of your screen. So with regards to this, um, you're best off trying to keep it in a centralized position. So if I just press F12 on my keyboard, um, what that will allow me to do is actually zero the thing off. And the reason that we keep the zero, zero, zero for X, Y, and Z is so that when we export this, it comes into um, a, a game engine like Unreal or Unity at zero, zero, zero. Um, you don't want this thing like off in a distance because when you import that in, you want to have uh, the direct control over where this thing's going to be. So always try to keep characters linked uh, to zero, 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 uh, just for the initial creation node. Okay, so um, we've got this triangle. What we now need to do is start looking at creating additional limbs. So what we've got is the triangle created. In order to create a pelvis, we need to go to the modify tab. And what we should see is that we've got this little button here saying create pelvis. If I click on that, what happens is it chucks a little square or cube even um, into your scene. Now this is like the building block for the rest of your character. So um, if you've got a character mesh in the scene, you line this up with its pelvis um, and then you can start building everything else from it. So when you want to build your own character, uh, go to the list that's at the side here. And all I'm going to do is click on where it says add leg. And what that does is it pops it a version into the scene of a leg and you can drag the positioning round. You can, you know, extend the scale of this. I'm just going to adjust this to be local space so that it works appropriately. Um, you can adjust the scale, you can adjust the position in the rotation. You can even tell it that you want more than two bones in there. So I'm going to put in three bones. And what that means is that, okay, it's, it's kind of freaked out a little bit here, but what I'm going to do is move this bone so that we've got a backward facing leg. Like so. And this system is very kind of robust in allowing you to do this sort of stuff um, so that you can make completely individualized characters that work with the meshes that you've, uh, you've built. What I would suggest though is try to keep the legs in a straight line because these things are going to use uh, inverse kinematics and what that means is if I grab this foot plate you can see that it starts kind of moving the leg around. Um, if you've got these things kind of facing off at weird angles it will have an effect on how it solves the kind of extensions on those things. So always try to keep the legs pretty much straight with that inverse kinematic line, okay? Um, but yeah, it is pretty flexible. So, um, you know, you can come up with whatever you need to, uh, to make an interesting character. I'm actually gonna kind of transfer this back to just two bones. So we've got the straight leg there. Um, I'm just gonna put a little bit of a curvature into it so that I know which angle the knee is going to bend at. And once you're happy with that, what you do is you go back to your pelvis and you click on add leg and that will add in a identical version of this, but on the opposite side. Now, what if you wanted to make a, a four legged character? Well, you could do that. All I'm going to do with this is just move the pelvis bone slightly. Actually, I'll move that further back like so, and grab these legs and then just move them forward like so. 
And actually, I will uh, extend them down. Okay, so on the back legs, what I can now do is just click on add leg. And as we can see, that's popped in another leg. So I'm just going to move this one further back. And actually on this part, we'll add in a third bone for that back leg. Okay, so this is going to be slightly exaggerated. But all I need to do now is go back to the pelvis and click on add leg and it adds in that other leg for me. Um, so what if you wanted to kind of do this as a, um, you know, uh, a centaur character? Well, we could add in a spine and that will pop this set of bones in that we can move around as and how we need them. And what that has effectively done is given us another hub to work with. So how we had the pelvis here, we can add all these extra bits. It gives us another one where we could potentially add in arms if we wanted to. And then we can drag these things around and put them into the positions that we're after. Now on the hand element, we can tell it how many digits we want. So I'm going to put in five and that gives us five fingers to work with. And it already kind of splits it into three segments for you. Now, um, you can kind of incorporate animation into these later on, which will allow you to spread out fingers and things. I'll probably look at that in another video. But we've copied this, or we've got this information here. So what I'm going to do is just kind of put this into a, a more neutral pose. Like so. And then go back to that hub and add arm and it copies it over for the other side. Um, with regards to heads, all I tend to do with these is add in a bone and that would be for the neck. I'm just going to position this closer to the front there and then add in another bone and on this second bone what I tend to do with that is just scale it up so that it represents the shape of the head that we're after. So that would be the head, okay? It'd be enough to work with. And then uh, finally, maybe I want to add in a tail. Okay, so if I go to where it says add tail, it will chuck in a series of bones that I can then kind of put into position. Like so, maybe put a bit of a, a curve into them. There we go, we've got a character that's, you know, centaur-like, um, but didn't take particularly long to set up. Um, but the cool thing about Catrig is that you can put a motion tab onto this really quickly. So if we go to uh, a motion layer even, sorry. Uh, if we go to the motion wheel, which we've got here, um, at the moment we haven't got any layers because we've just created this thing. But if we go to where it says ABS, and we keep his uh, finger clicked on that button, we can scroll down to where it says um, motion. And when we add that on there, we can click on the stop indication and it turns it to play for us. If we just click on play, it will start putting motions in. Now you've got a button here called uh, motion editor and this will allow you to play with the specific uh, features within the mesh that you've just created. So I can kind of start adjusting the positioning of how those legs move. I can uh, play around with the uh, speed of the thing. I can also, looking at the legs, start to play around with the distances that things move, um, the angles that things work at. Um, so. I would advise you to have a look at some of these things in order to start creating an interesting uh, motion. 
okay so i'm going to leave it at that for the time being um the video kind of indicates how you could go about creating a cat rig from scratch i could potentially put on uh, cat motion layers um and then yeah maybe you kind of expand on that and start putting your own take into those animations okay so uh thanks for watching